everyone, nearly midnight here at ATL. I've got my compression socks, noise canceling headset, and eye mask. And so that can really only mean one thing. I'm in for the, a long haul flight heading over to Seoul then down to Andong to visit my colleague at Andong National University. Uh, just so happens that our postdoc, Dan Rell, is also over there. We're doing a lot of AAA Labs work uh, this summer, some of it in Korea. So I'm going to go head over, check out things, and give you an update along the way. Hope you enjoy. So our work is funded and supported by Project APSM, the Healthy Hives Initiative, as well as the USDA APHIS and North Dakota Department of Ag. So really appreciate that support to allow us to travel across the world to study this really important parasite. This is my second trip to Korea and really appreciate just seeing all those lovely mountains dotted with trees. Apparently there are thousands of colonies that are lining all the valleys and they're used for pollination services and we'll touch on that in a, in a future video. So this trip is really focused on Tropolelaps mercedes A and it is one of four Tropolelaps parasites that we know about. It infects Apis mellifera, so that western honeybee that we have in North America, as well as in, in Europe. And what's particularly interesting in Korea is that the mite is persisting in areas that have a pretty proper winter without much brood or maybe no brood at all. So this is really interesting because we believe that Tropolelaps needs brood to survive and persist. And so this Tropolelaps mite seems to be spreading across Asia into maybe even Eastern Europe. And so that's why we're here trying to understand what's going on and also try to prepare the US and European beekeeper for a potential invasion by Tropolelaps mercedes A. All right, Dan, I finally made it. Awesome to see you after two months or more. You've been over in Andong National University. Welcome to so, Korea. Thank you. So I'm looking forward to having some uh, good adventures with you and checking out uh, some of our projects and maybe having a few uh, nice uh, drinks and some food. So what's in store for us uh, this week? Yeah, well, you're, you're coming at a busy time. We're just finishing one field trial and maintaining uh, data collection for some others. Um, and then just meeting all the international collaborators in the lab and, and uh, talking through some other research okay. in future directions. All right, awesome. All right, Dan, so what's what's going on here? We've got a frame taken from our management trial colonies or one of our management trial colonies. That's right. Today we're doing final data assessment uh, for the Tropolelaps management trial okay. where some colonies, uh, we let them be untreated controls. So the Tropolelap levels rose. Yep. Um, but in our other treatment, which was a brood break plus formic acid, uh, we're seeing uh, good control of okay. tropolelaps. Okay. Okay. So one of the one of the ways that we're assessing tropolelaps infestation, which we did uh, eight weeks ago at the start of the trial, and then now at the end of the trial, is by uncapping two hundred cells of capped brood. Mm -hmm. uh, so we open up, we remove the cell capping with forceps, remove whatever stage of brood is in there, looking at both sides to see if it has any tropolelaps or varroa mites. And then we also look inside the cell mm -hmm. with, with light. Got you. Yeah, I can. Uh, this is a control, I guess, because I can already see a couple tropolelaps cruising around the, the frame. Hey, that's right. Often, when you uncap a cell, the tropolelaps mites uh, will start running around on the head of the brood right away, and then maybe one or two will start moving onto the comb. Yeah, they're yeah. they're very they're very active compared to varroa. Yeah. Yeah, the size size difference is pretty pretty apparent. Uh, just so much smaller than Varroa. Yes, uh, the, a third a third the size. Yeah, so you've got your purple eyed pupa over there, and you've been um, adding a, a mite or two, so we can we can really see the the difference in size quite easily. And if a beekeeper in the in the U.S. had trouble seeing Varroa mites, well, they're in for a, a even bigger shock with the the size of that triple A so. This mite takes quite a bit of practice to. Uh, yeah. to to be detecting effectively and, and yeah we we don't want us beekeepers to have to practice that yeah 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 even um in my uh, day or two here getting that search image up has is, is been a bit of a, a challenge for myself so uh, you've been here for three months and uh yeah you got a good image there and they're they're tiny so all right well thanks dan of course is the, what does the average Korean beekeeper do for, for managing trophy labs? Yes, um, we do not really separate the management of Baroa and trophy labs. Okay. 